In this video, I'm all about the brakes, about the brakes, no servo. Well, I've learnt a valuable lesson. Um, I thought these two had a very different bore, but it turns out that the new one had this protective washer in place to protect the um, bore in there. So actually, they're identical. Um, I wish I'd discovered that before sending them back to Pass Parts, but thank you to Pass Parts for being very patient with me. I've probably learned not to work on cars when you're feeling a bit under par. And to be honest, I'd rather be outside today because it's absolutely gorgeous. But nonetheless, I would like to get this fitted. So now I can go back to trying to fit the um, push rod. Here we go. Oh yes, that's much easier to do when you've actually got the um, the washer out of the way. Um, Jobs are good. Right, um, need to lube that up, put the seal back on, and then I think we're ready to get it back on the car. Oh, probably a good idea to fit the um, reservoir as well, maybe. And there we go, a uh, simple job to bolt in the um, new master cylinder. Um, so now we can focus on getting the brakes connected up. Well, thanks to my mate Jasper, we now have a new bit of pipe in place, and that was necessary because the flare I'd put on the first bit of pipe was incorrect, it was a single flare. Um, so thank you to the um, YouTube commenter who po pointed that out, um, very glad of that. It was also pointed out I got one of the shoes upside down. Um, you, you effectively want them so they're the same way, so gap there, gap there. So that, that should all be good now. So the shoes are back in place, that was a hell of a game. And um, new pipe fitted, new wheel cylinder. So this side is complete. Right, let's see if this works. What we need is a nice loop. There's a loop. Thread the loop through the hole. Off the loop around the spring. I bloody hate shoes. Take two. My god, it actually worked. It's actually located where it should be. Wow. Well, I had to have another go at the rear brakes because I forgot to fit the drum retaining springs on that side and I got the handbrake set up wrong on that side. Uh, so it's taken two or three goes, but we finally got there. Now it's the front brakes. Oh, sorry, brake. Oh, this is going to be fun. Well, it has to be said, this is definitely a downside of a three-wheeled car. Uh, there is the brake tucked away under there. I uh, can't get the shoe off, sorry, the drum off at the moment. May have to try heat, but first, lunch. Well, um, the brakes are all back together again, so front and rear brakes should now be good. Uh, the next stage is to refill the hydraulics and um, bleed it. And the only problem is, I can't remember where my bleed kit is. Um, so I'm going to blame all you who are telling me to tidy my workshop up because now I've no idea where my bleed kit is. Um, i better have a look for it. So now I've got the um, brakes all rebuilt and back together. Um, it was time to test the hydraulics but I must admit uh, off camera I made quite a boo-boo. Um, I, I topped up the master cylinder, opened up the bleed nipple on this rear brake and was then operating the handlebars as you should and going it doesn't seem to be pushing any fluid through and that's because I'd forgotten to connect the push rod to the handlebars so they were just moving completely independently but once sorted fluid uh, started coming out and then I could rope in my assistant for some bleeding so there we go I've lost my glamorous assistant so I've got a block of wood holding the brake on Absolutely solid. This side, absolutely solid this side. So it would appear I have brakes. And just to prove that's not a fluke, take my chock out. 
then that return and the wheels turn once more da -da 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 -da. on both sides hurrah so now I have brakes uh, it's time to consider propulsion um, it's sadly a bit dark now so tomorrow I'm gonna see if the project car will start well there we are we've got the light on this time and if anything um, given the marks timing marks here and there's where the pulley is uh, that's actually a little bit too advanced um, whereas the other engine before I broke it was lighting up about here um, so I'm, I'm gonna say that's okay for testing purposes and um, it's tempting to give it a bit of a crank. I need to replace a missing bolt. And I'll probably need to replace this completely knackered carburetor. Right, here we go. We've got the manifold, um, all, all this and the carburetor from Tuck now fitted to the spares car. So we can give it a go and see if it'll actually run. Sounds good enough to me. Blown the exhaust to pieces again, but I think we can say that engine runs very nicely. So, all I've got to do now is pull this out and put it in the other one. How hard can it be? Right, an awful lot of things to disconnect um, to make this possible. Um, get all the heater hoses out of the way. Um, I'm probably going to take the dyno start off to make the engine lighter and I've got to get the exhaust off and the engine actually drops out through the floor so um, we've got it on stands already nice and high up so um, yeah better get to it well we're getting close to getting this out speedometer drive has been disconnected uh, gear linkage down below I've taken the dyna start unit off to save a bit of weight I uh, just need to release that mounting that one's free that side um, but I'm um, having a bit of difficulty getting the bolt out there and it appears to be time to stop for food but I have managed to lift it up this far so far so that should be touching that so we are getting there and um, yeah the interesting bit is going to be trying to drop it out uh, I've got to go forwards before that though to clear this mount here for first lunch well it's almost out but not quite, I just can't quite get it forward of that mount enough to drop out and um, annoyingly that bracket is welded on um, so it's not like I can just unbolt it and get it out of the way a bit frustrating well, we've definitely got the engine down mm, it's not going to clear oh. need a bit of space um, right, we might have to lift it's the body up a little bit too high yeah, no one to catch the oil cooler, that would be bad news. Right, time to get creative. And after much huffing and puffing, it's out. Now what do we do? Tea. Tea. And that's where we must end this video. Uh, we have an Invercar no longer with an engine, which means, makes it much lighter and much easier to push. Um, but I need to suss out whether I'm going to get this engine repaired or whether I'm going to pull the spare engine out, and if so, how on earth am we going to do that when it's perched up on a stack of pallets? Um, it's going to be interesting to find out. Um, so stay tuned and um, yeah, don't forget to subscribe and then you'll be told when the next video goes live. And if you're interested, leave a comment below and uh, we can chat about the ridiculous world of the Invercar. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you again in a future video. Farewell.